Hey guys, welcome back. Let's play Chrono Cross. Last time we put our new Master Mune to work and we took out two of the dragons in one episode. There were relatively short dungeons leading up to those dragons. This time we've got a little more work to take care of. And in order to go there, we don't have to, but it'll save us a lot of heartache if we do a little bit of prep work. First things first, I went back off screen to another world and I fought some of those gaks on the Viper Manor Bluffs. I, it's tedious, so I didn't want to do a lot of it. Um, I managed to, I think I fought like six groups of them and I got one additional antitoxinal cap in addition to the one I got much earlier in the game. It would be nice to have three because a lot of the enemies will poison you in the upcoming area, but I'm lazy and it took too long, so two will have to do. The other thing that we want is available here in Homeworld. We pop in here, make sure Fargo's in the party, and run into the Lava Boy over here. Now, I've already stolen two of these. But basically, you want to bring Fargo and you want to fight these guys and hopefully he doesn't get interrupted a thousand times which of course is going to happen because that's the way the game likes to do things and then we're going to steal and you want to make sure you're stealing from the lab boys and not the hot doggities who are kind of invisible there and I, I'm trying to figure out which enemies I'm fighting here according to one of the walkthroughs I've been looking at, there are two different variations of the Lava Boy in uh, in Homeworld. And it just says first area we're encountered and second area we're encountered. Well, I've encountered this one particular one in this one particular spot. And some of the time I steal a Flame Charm and some of the time I steal a Red Brooch. Though if I look at the two variations, I wouldn't expect that to be the case. Either I got really lucky and it's the second type, which I don't think it is, because I know where the second type is supposed to be encountered, but the second type has a common seal of Flame Charm, the rare steel of a Red Brooch. This other one has a common seal of a Red Brooch and it's supposed to be the rare steel of a Stone Helmet. But that's not what I keep getting here. Like I said, it's happened twice. We're going to drop that one because we don't really need it. I've already fought a couple of groups of these guys and killed them with uh, my summon. My yellow summon there, making sure to weaken them first because sadly Norris has crap for his... Uh, uh, for his magic attack stat and he doesn't always kill them. Fast forward through this. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure which variations I'm fighting. And because I was using summons, I never saw their drops. And the one time I fought a group of one like this, he dropped nothing. So let's see. Are you serious? I missed. That had to be what, 95%? Come on, video game. Okay, we'll do this again. I like it when there's just one of them because the fight goes a lot faster and I can just... Uh... That was a 96% steal that missed. This game hates me. There we go. Again, a flame charm. Did I just get really lucky and steal two that were a rare steal? Because I'm pretty sure these are supposed to be the ones that drop Denoderate. And if they are that one, no, they're not. The I got two rare steals. Interesting. Really wish the walkthrough would 
explain that a little better. Instead of saying first and second area we're encountered, we should at least list them. Anyway, enough of that. Um, the hope is to steal red brooches. Red brooches protect you against anti-red and, more importantly in this case, red status effects. I was hoping to get three of these. I will, I've already gotten two and I've stolen, including the two successful attempts that you just saw, I have stolen seven times and gotten two of them. So I'm going to try this one more time and see if I get it. If not, we're just going to move on. Okay, either there's two different variants in the same area or I just got extremely lucky and managed to steal two of them. Uh, sadly, because I was using Gollum to take out the groups of four, I never saw what their drops were on any of the ones that uh, I fought that actually gave me the red brooch, so I can't clarify which variant, if there are just the one or if there's both or whatever. I know that the version that we were stealing from there, that we got the drops from, that that one is actually in another area as well. But anyway, so yeah, we finished off two of the three dragons in uh, Homeworld here in the previous episode, the Earth Dragon and the Water Dragon. The only remaining one is in Gaia's Navel. Now, you might remember that we spoke to one of the... Uh, one of the pirates on the ship one time, and he said he saw a wingipede going from Hydra Marshes to Gaia's Navel. That's your indication that you're supposed to come back here. And if you haven't been here already, you might not have met this guy. How did you get that flute? It's mine. What happened to the Wayapede? We Biba always defeated. You're going to get revenge. You want to know something? I think they forgot to give him better stats, more HP, and anything. Uh, let's throw Eagle Eye, Surge. Surge, kill things, please. Yeah, they forgot to give more things. Okay. That was fun. Challenging, challenging battles we have here. Ah, well, now he's sorry. It's uh, Biba Ancient Fruit from the Ancient Ground be able to tame the Wingipede with this. Do you remember when we first encountered the Wingipede above that broken uh, piece of ground, or at least it was broken after we fought the Wingipede, where we fell in and found Rasly? Surge had offered to feed it something and then it got angry. Now we have to blow the flute. And further down the branch where my friend is, you'll be able to ride the Wingipede to the ancient Ground. And you get an ancient fruit. Now, if you use it up or somehow get rid of it, you can always talk to this guy and get more of them for free. They do not lock you out of things. Don't be afraid. Now, what is this ancient ground? You know it as Gaia's Navel, a remote island surrounded by cliffs in the Sea of Alita mystical place where a primeval forest may still exist. Yeah, what is this thing? With the flute alone, even the beavers get attacked. Uh, you need the ancient fruit. They grow that fruit. Uh, they grow the fruit. It's big, and so is the wingipede, so it's got enough to eat. Tame the wingipede with just one bite of the fruit. You just need one for a round trip. And what about the wingipede? The big bug. I think you fought it before. Really? How do you know this? Ancient ground to the forest. 
right. Get that auto save in. And, well, there's his friend. What do you say? Call the wingipede here. Use the flute to call the wingipede and feed it the fruit. Now, the game is nice and... Uh, where is it? There's the flute. All you have to do is have the fruit in your inventory and then use the flute and it automatically eats and lets us uh, board, for lack of a better term. And it flies us to Gaia's navel. And some unique and adventurous music. We'll be able to make it back if we blow the flute here again. You come from the sky. Whoa! What have we here? Friend of father. Uh, no, not exactly. He's a brave warrior, huh? Lost father when fairy. You're still little. Look at how tiny you are. Father went to the sky. Oh, I see. We also came from the sky. I understand now. We do not know your father. Hmm. This is Leah. Villagers are not here. Only Leah and he come here. Dragon? Be pretty tough. You help fight him. You've been winning against him so far. Leah temporarily joins the party. Leah is... Well... Not the greatest stats this time. Oh, wow, her magic stat is atrocious. Um... I want to show her off. She's not as good on this file as I was hoping was hoping for a better magic stat, to be quite honest, considering Norris can barely kill anything with his summon. His magic stat is not that much lower than other characters. Like, you know, you can see 16, 21. Oddly enough, Karsh is my second highest magic stat, if you don't include the links there. Dell's got 30. No one else even comes close. Most of the characters we have have about half that. No one has a uh, good, uh, good magic stat in this run. I was gonna, you know what? Screw it. We'll use her anyway. There's reasons. Anyway, Leah. Um, those were stats. Cave girl. Build is infantile. She's six. She wields an axe as large as herself. And I set her up with her gear here. Gave her basically all of uh, the elements that I had given to Norris a moment ago. And I've set up my characters for this area. Antitoxinal cap on Lynx, as well as the Red Bridge. We want to protect against poison because it's going to be used a lot. I don't want to heal it. So that's just a laziness factor. And then red status effects protection is actually going to be beneficial. Um, I don't expect you to have too many of these since apparently the information I have about it being a common drop is wrong. Or the enemy that has it is mixed in as a random enemy with another enemy. I don't know why I couldn't get them reliably. Whatever, it doesn't matter. If you can pick up one, put it on links. Uh, you're the same. We have an axe wielder with an axe, an antidoxinal cap, and a red bridge. Okay, this area is not small, but not uh, too big. Let's go over here first and take a look at what uh, Leah was doing up here before we showed up. We got a green brooch, speaking of brooches. And this one is guarded by enemy.
multiple enemies. We have Prey Mantis and we have Pterodact. Uh, the Prey Mantis has a Forest Charm as a common steal and a Green Brooch as a rare steal. And the enemy that we're not encountering with there. Uh, yeah, we don't have that enemy in this battle, so that doesn't matter. Uh, Pterodact. This is the kind of the one of the annoying. Actually, no, this isn't. I was thinking that was the case because it was red in it, but uh, that's not the case. These guys are annoying because their attacks like this will inflict poison and then I'll have to heal it after battle. I don't want to do that. Um, sure, let's have you attack this one. I don't want to kill you because I would like to try and steal from the mantises. Not that we really need it, but uh, it'd be nice to have. Get a forest charm. You you really want to have an additional uh, green brooch if you could. You don't need it, but anyway, let's take a look at our new character here. How about you not target her so I can show off her fierce attack? Thank you. Or you could miss, that works too. Rock throw! Yes, our little cave girl is indeed basically an Isla clone. Isla clone, whatever, from Chrono Trigger. Her text all mimic it. Uh, she has rock throw. Later on, we will show off the other variant that she has. In the meantime, this guy will use flap. I don't think that's anything to worry about, if I remember correctly. And let's just... Uh, I guess we could go for the uh, summon here. Sure, we'll go for the summon. Turn green? Well, I don't want to turn green. Uh, build up your element power once again. Stop casting turn green. Thank you. Okay, so there we go. Defend again. There's another flap. And then basically strategy is low rest, low rest, low rest, and then summon. Assuming we don't run into any additional issues and they don't get a turn. Go. One more turn, please. Thank you. And yeah, our level five tech is called Tailspin. Again, another one of Isla's techs from the previous game. Here's our Golem. You do want to make sure you weaken them because her magic stat is atrocious. You may even want to cast Magnify beforehand. She's doing better here than uh, the Norse was in other places because the enemies are, for the most part, actually weak to her, uh, her element there. And we got some Shiny Sands. Okay. So yeah, we'll take our little Isla clone around here. Now, this isn't explained very well. Uh, did I note here which way I wanted to go? Now, in order to answer the call of that whatever it was that roared a moment ago, we need to kill... I don't know if it's all the enemies, but I think it's 12 enemy groups. Yeah. You gotta defeat 12 different enemy groups here in order for the uh, guy to spawn. Apparently he's uh, shy around larger groups. So let's go over here and around the corner. Let's go get that treasure chest. And here is the other new enemy. Prehistoric! Prehistoric? Either way, this is why we want to have our protection from status effects. There we go, that should be enough damage there. I'll throw on fast forward here. 
and we'll have you attack this one. There we go. And we'll have Fargo attack this one a couple of times. Jurassic Beat. You're going to find this extremely annoying because this inflicts confusion. And that's basically all they do is they spam that over and over and over again. Getting Link's confused when he does all the damage, not fun. I think they got most of their attacks in, so let's just uh, start doing uh, low rats here. Fargo can go as well. Now, do take a look at uh, Leah there. She has terrible stat recovery, or stamina recovery. So I'm going to toss an extra attack in there. I wasn't sure if she'd quite make it. And, no, I press down. And there's the Golem. But yeah, the uh, prehistoric view has an Earth Charm as a common steel and a yellow brooch as a rare steel. So now that I've got... Really? God, she does garbage damage. Well, whatever. I will be trying to steal from the remaining groups. And there's some Donaterite if you're interested. This is the place to go to if you really need Donaterite, because almost all the chests around here are going to contain it, and the enemies around here drop. So if you need Donaterite still, this is probably a good place to go. Can I, can I move, please? Thank you. Now, the way that this area works is it's a big giant circle. We go over here. There is invisible plot wall. Thanks. Okay, we'll go over here. I was going to fight him, but we'll fight this one instead. Okay, we got an opportunity, so I might as well show off Tailspin. Which is a little dumber than it was in the previous game. In the other game, it made no sense. No idea where the, uh, the wind really came from. All Ayla did was dance, but okay. Also in that fight, the inflict poison on the one character who doesn't have protection against it. Make sure you bring antidotes and ointments. Not that confusion lasts after battle, but as you can see, this is a dead end. But we do want to kill, like I said, all, uh, all 12 groups not sure exactly where they all are, but if you leave the area and come back, then you'll have to redo everything. I'll leave that one there because he'll be there when I uh, when I come back. If I can I not go over there? There we go. Is there anything up here? I don't remember. Apparently not. I do have a map. I should probably look at the map. That would be smart. Yeah, there's only two items on the screen. Yeah, it's pretty hard to uh, get any type of summon off when uh, Fargo gets confused and randomly throws dumb elements out there. I will take care of a bunch of these guys off screen here. All right, we killed a few of those guys. Now we can climb up here and grab some treasure. So I'm pretty sure this one's guarded too. Not all right. Yeah, there's another one. As you're killing these guys, um, if you decide you need to heal or you need to save or something like that, go back. You'll have to start all over again. So I highly recommend you don't leave once you get here. Um, other than the green brooch, all the treasure chests around here are all Donaterite. So if you don't feel you need the Donaterite, you don't need to. Okay, I need to go to the upper path there. Luckily, the enemies don't respawn as long as you don't leave the area. So it's not like you have to fight with, uh, you know, respawning enemies or anything like that. And with that one down, we get more Donaterite. 
Yay! We already have more than enough of that. Plus, we've probably gotten another eight pieces or something like that just by fighting the enemies around here. Okay, what else we got around here? Treasure chest. Got that. Backtrack. Go up here. Two more enemies. All right, we finished off those two enemies there. Not too much to them. There is a treasure here. Did I get them all? And the other question is, can I go up here? I can. That means there's probably one more up here. There we go. I would... Oh, there's another one. After killing that one, I ran back to the save point here. We saved. We swapped everything back over to Norris, who I just left behind. And now that you've done that, uh, Leah will be sitting right here. Be cautious lately. He no show himself. You see the boss here. So we keep thumping monsters and get angry and come out. So if we finish off the last of the enemies over here, Which shouldn't take all that long. Into black hole. Now you can, if you're going for pure damage, you can just use glide hook to the same effect. But since black hole is already right there on the attack, it also has that chance of instant death. I often just use that instead. And what do you say now? He no show himself. Now, the way that this works is as soon as you killed all the enemies and then come into this screen, then it will be quiet. This is probably when you want to set up if you're not already. Not the green dragon, but a fucking dinosaur. And he's a big boy, too. Here we have Tyranno, very similar to other enemies that we've fought in Chrono Trigger. And he comes with a random pterodact. I don't know why. Um, more important than anything else in this fight. Don't attack Fer or Fargo. Ferris. What video game am I playing again? This is not Final Fantasy V. We want to steal from the Tyranno. This is our first access to one of the better accessories in the entire game. So give me my power seal. Never mind, we will try again. This video game is evil. I want my power seal. I don't want your stupid earring of light. I got that as a random drop from another enemy we already fought. Uh, all right, let's try it again. Round two, fight. And here's the flap. Basically, the way you want to take out the uh, other enemy there, the uh, Pterodac, is just use a, I don't know, Deluge or Iceberg or something like that. There's my power seal. Now we can actually do things in this uh, fight here. Um, let's... Well, I guess I could use you to do this, too. You could n decide not to waste your attacks like this, but uh, what I'm going to do, because of course I am, is I'm going to Eagle Eye Surge. <laughs> Say it with me again now. We're going to Strength and Surge, because why bother doing anything else? And... There's one. There's two. Oh, if you don't auto crit against this one. And then we'll throw a black hole. Why not? Give us an instant death chance on the side guy. And if not, the damage is probably enough. Yeah, there we got the instant death going. And... There's that. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in kind of how my elements are set up right now, turn of the opposite color that the character is anti-whatever, because this is uh, only available to be equipped by the innate color 
that's opposite that. So this is yellow. Uh, you need to be yellow to equip it. It's anti-green, kind of confusing, but usually if there's a room, I'll put a cure plus for a blue element. Eagle Eye, Strengthen, Low Res, Weak Minded, Genius, pretty much how the uh, base level goes. Filling in a couple of elements that we aren't going to duplicate with the elements that I want to put here, which are Cure Plus, Heal All, Purify, Recover All, and Revive. So usually I'll put like Weaken, Imbecile, maybe some uh, Low Res in addition. And then just basically fill out the rest of it so that you have different colors of elements. And then one of all these level 5 elements, the uh, Carnivore goes down below because he sucks with it anyway. Not that I'm ever going to use any of them, but they're there. And hey, look, Sun Shower. Have I shown this off? It's not so great. Well, we need stamina refresh. Crunch Out is this guy's special attack. It can inflict sprain, I believe, for some reason, even though it's a red innate. Oh, I was going to use Iceberg on it. Oh, well. It's dead. That's fine. For defeating him, we get our next star level. We get some stats. And a guaranteed re resistance ring drop, which sucked a long time ago. What's that? Now, the game forces you to follow along here. talk to you? No? The game won't let you talk to her. I'm gonna run away because I haven't saved in a little bit. Uh, well, since that fight anyway. I don't want to keep that steel. And I... Why am I not able to talk to you right now? Anyway. Go back here and save for the day. Now, at this point, we've just fought a boss fight, so we could decide to leave now, since that barrier up front has been removed now. We could leave, we could fight some battles, we could gain some additional uh, mini stat levels, but I'm lazy and I'm not going to do that. You could if you wanted to. It's unnecessary. I have been doing a little bit of... kind of... well, there's the... Uh, let's get back on that save point. Show it real quick. I have been going and pulling in a couple characters that I plan on actually using later, like Karsh and uh, let's see, Starkey, Sprig, and even Groybeck. Just bringing them in to fight a battle after I've already gotten my uh, mini stat up for the characters I'm actually using, because I plan on using those characters later and having them with some better stats would be beneficial. You don't have to do it. Um, it takes like two minutes. I just go to the, uh, whatever it is, the, oh, uh, what's it, before a pass a beach? Not Fossil Valley, the other one. Either way, go there, surge one shots everything, and then you just get your little mini stat up for all the other ones. You only have to fight one battle with each party group. You don't have to equip them or anything. So you can do that. I've done it as we've been doing the dragon, so I've done it for like three or four levels now. I may or may not keep going at it. Like I said, I'm only doing it for a couple characters just so that I can keep them up on their stats. My Karsh on this file is nuts. I've never seen... Like, I don't remember what my stats are from run to run, but my Karsh was never this good before. He has the third best magic stat of all my characters and the second best strength stat. He's really freaking good, and he's not even a character I use that much long term. But I think he's the second best green innate character in the game. So there's that. But yeah, if you want to fill out some of your other character stats, you can do that as well. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Next time, we will go talk to, presumably, the green dragon. The entire area is green. I'm probably safe in assuming it's the green dragon the white dragon or the uh, the fire dragon. I don't think the fire dragon would do too well here. It would probably burn everything. But yeah, that's all for this one. And all. See
see you guys next time.